Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the brand spanking new Brodo Fantasy Football Podcast. I am your host, Tim Petropolis. Here are my two brothers, the only two twins that are bringing you the brand new year-long Brodo Fantasy Podcast. Michael Petropolis to you my left, know. Jason Petropolis to my Every right. Every week. And... Obviously, if you've been listening to us for the past two years, you know the deal. We are three brothers that are obsessed with fantasy football. And not only that, we're obsessed with winning. And we win. We win very regularly. So what did we do? We put our money where our mouth is. And we got ourselves a brand new studio. And we got, number one, a brand new website. Number two, a brand new stat for you guys to dive into. And hopefully this stat will make you as good as we are in fantasy. All of us currently in a fantasy championship game next week. I'm doing um, it out with Michael in the Brodo League. Bring it yes, on, Yes, at brother. least one. Jason just beat me using the formula that we're about to tell you about. So let's not skip any anything. Let's get right into it. Our brand new website is called BrodoFF.com. BrodoFantasy.com will also be available very soon. But for now, BrodoFF.com. And on that website, you will find three things. Number one, you'll find our podcast. And our podcast come out every Wednesday. We have two episodes. That is our bread and butter. That is where we go over every single fantasy viable player in the in the league. Every single one. If they are playing, we are going to talk about them and tell you if they're a good player or a bad play. We are the only podcast that does that. Second, we're the only podcast that comes with a stat just for you. But before we get into that stat, Michael, can you explain to us the other stuff that goes into the website, the waiver rankings and the rankings uh, that come out every week? Why don't you tell us about that? We got rankings coming out every single Wednesday. Uh, quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, tight ends, defense, no kickers. We hate kickers. Can't rank kickers. Fuck off kickers. <laughs> and then we got waivers coming out every single Tuesday where we give you our rankings, our overall rankings, our rankings per position, and a description per each player. Bada bing, bada boom. And uh, tweet we every have touchdown. tweet every touchdown. We put out polls for the primetime games. Yeah, and we have the true target value now as a tab as well, which yeah. Jason is going to have to explain. Yeah, we'll get, right, we'll get into that. But uh, before we get into that, uh, just a reminder that this is brodoff.com. Again, that's brodoff.com. Dot com where you will find true value formulas. Now, Jason invented this stat himself. Um, if for those of you who don't know, Jason is quite the uh, how could I say this nerd in a good way, right? <laughs> like he loves just like learning and he loves studying and he loves being innovative, right? And that and that kind of all comes and translates to Jason has been in terms of winning championships the most successful. Of the three brothers in wow. terms of winning championships. It took the camera to get this yeah. out of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I- I'm there too. I'm there too. Three championships each. But Jason has won his championships in a little, like, a smaller space of time than I have. So That's because I was, like, seven when you were winning championships. <laughs> nah, you were... Uh, how-, how old are you in 2007? That's when I won my first championship. 12. There you go. All right, so... <laughs> um, but Jason, you know, he started to think... T- really, it started with a, a debate on our show. Where I said I love Corey Davis, Corey Davis because he gets 9, 10, 11 targets a game. And he countered with to me and he said, I would rather have Josh Gordon's 5 targets than Corey Davis's 10. And we started talking and he kind of got lost in space. And I was like, "What? Jason doesn't usually get lost in space. And what he was thinking up was this stat where he has figured out how to quantify the value of a target, not only... For the wide receiver and the running back who are getting the target, he's also learned to quantify the value of every throw that a quarterback makes. So obviously you can't predict uh, volume. You can have a kind of idea of volume. But what you can predict is if the player gets the volume, what they will do with that. So Jason, please uh, talk about these stats that you invented and tell the people all about them. Yes, sir. So I'm going to have Corey Davis to thank my entire life for this. Uh, The night I thought of this, I was just rolling in bed thinking of ways I could perfect it uh i told michael and tim the next day through text all of my ideas and they were like do it kid yeah so i got to it so the key point here is that everything is based off of fantasy points we are a fantasy podcast and honestly outside of the fact that you know josh allen's not the best quarterback per se but he's a good fantasy quarterback lately right but typically a good fantasy player is a good real life player you could say generally so that's the approach we're trying to take here I just wanted to look at, there's no rushing involved in the statistic. I just wanted to look at quarterbacks, the way they throw the ball, 
receivers, tight ends, and running backs the way they cash the ball, the amount of targets that they see, and quantify it that way. Uh, as Tim said, Corey Davis seeing 10 targets from Marcus Mariota is a good example. Me and Michael were all over the don't start Corey Davis this week train, even though he was seeing 10 targets a game. I would argue that I'd rather start Doug Baldwin, who's seeing five targets a game from Russell Wilson. And that's the point of this stat is to compare players who are seeing different target volumes because recently in the past, all you can do is look at targets, say, okay, Corey Davis is seeing a lot. Let's put him in my lineup. Let's chase volume. I want it to say efficiency is more important than volume. Uh, so it starts off with the quarterback true throw value. Both of these are TTV. We got true throw value and true uh, target value. The position players have the targets. Quarterbacks have the throw. True throw value is a measure of efficiency for a quarterback. Essentially, what I wanted to do was find how valuable a quarterback is uh, on a per throw basis in terms of fantasy points. So I wanted to get rid of the randomness that has to do with uh, their rushing stats, the randomness of uh, you know uh, drop passes, stuff of that sort. I really just wanted to get down to the nitty gritty and see when this guy throws the ball, how many points do I expect him to get? And off of that... That gave me a general basis. That That's the quarterback true throw value. Essentially, how many points you expect your quarterback to get per throw. And then we have true target value coming off of that. When we look at true target value, we're looking at the targets that the people are seeing, the quality, the quantity. And, of course, the most important part that has been forgotten about for through the test of time, the person throwing the ball. You know, when I first invented, uh, created this stat, I thought to myself, there has to be something out here like this. And I looked all over the internet and I just couldn't find it. So I was like, targets, the most important thing is who's throwing the ball. And for some reason, we've never looked into that. It was like a eureka moment. So the target values are a derivative of the true throw value. So we're working with the true throw value of the quarterback. We're looking at the quantity and quality of the targets that the wide receiver is or tight end or running back is receiving. And then with that information, we're coming up with a value that tells you how how valuable that player is according to the the to- what targets, how many targets they're seeing from which quarterback. So that was a mouthful. And like I said, Jason loves to study was and learn things. No, not at all. Uh, I In think it was great. Analysis. But let's but let's simplify it Go for, for it. a second, right? I'm gonna drink some let's water. say let's say that you have a situation where Marlon Mack is missing a game and Kareem Hunt is missing a game. And you want to know which of these players to play in your PPR league, Naheem Hines or Damian Williams. And you have a situation where Naheem Hines is probably going to see more targets than Damian Williams. But because of the offense Damian Williams is, because of the quarterback that he has, he's more likely to get more points from less targets compared to uh, Naheem Hines. And the way we know that is because we quantify what he has done with his targets and what Andrew Luck does with his throws. We combine those things. Also, Jason has balanced these things so that the most recent um, the most recent sample size, so the last four games, weighs heavier on the overall value. That is also something I forgot to mention. On the website, we have the full season long t- t- true values. And then right beneath, if you want to scroll down a little further... We have the last four weeks. Last four weeks is what I like to look at a little bit more when I'm making matchup uh, lineup decisions. Season long is a little more important when you're looking towards the waiver wire or looking for trades. For example, I'll get into it. I My team in the Broto League, to be completely honest, does not deserve to be in the championship. I can't believe how your team beat I'm, mine. I put up 2,000 points this year. I'm throwing together got, a makeshift lineup and every I got week. A demolished. Two weeks ago, I started Kenny Stills against New England. Uh, nobody was even talking about him. He hadn't produced in a while. But I had this stat to talk about, and I had to circle around it. All these weeks in Brodo, I kept saying, I just have a feeling about this player. I had to circle around it the whole time. Ryan Tannehill, in his last four weeks, is second in true throw value with .647, just behind Russell Wilson. So he's been extremely efficient. If you look at his season on the whole, he's the one, two, three, four. He's the fifth quarterback on the season. So when it comes to efficiency, he's not throwing the ball a lot. The Dolphins are a run first team. When it comes to efficiency, Ryan Tannehill has been the fifth best quarterback in terms of fantasy output. Something you never expect to see without this stat. So my thoughts were he likes to target Kenny Stills. This is a good matchup. Kenny Stills is uh has 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 been out with injury, so people forget about him. Let's get him in the lineup. Kenny Stills, of course, exploded that day. Last week I liked uh Sam Darnold coming back from injury, had his best 
uh, one of his best um, outputs of the season for true throw value. Looking at Robbie Anderson, <laughs> seeing his targets and stuff of that sort, I decided that Robbie Anderson was a good play for it last week. And we were at that game, so Timmy had to witness it firsthand. Luckily, I listened to Jason, and I played Robbie Anderson in my other league, so I was like half happy and half sad. Exactly, and he found it. So the point being, you can use this to try to find what people can do a lot with. You're looking for efficiency. Uh, I'm not surprised that Mike Williams went off last week. Phillip Rivers is second in the league in true throw value. Once Keenan Allen went down, his targets went to Mike Williams. His red zone targets went to Mike Williams. Mike Williams put up wide receiver one numbers. And if you combine those red zone targets and those regular targets, that's what we're talking about. A guy like Mike Williams, you can never predict an injury like Keenan Allen's, right? But in Jason's case... If you're getting eight targets from Phillip Rivers, you are getting the second most value from eight targets than anyone else in the league. So that's where Mike Williams becomes the best player, right? Yep. And now this this really changes the game, especially in PPR leagues. Now you cannot, uh, and half PPR leagues, even in standard leagues, you can never really predict uh, volume, right? That's the part that will always be the wild card. That's the part that we could try and predict as much as we can. But again, we can predict what players will do with that volume based on how their quarterback playing, based on the offense, based on the last four weeks, based on their efficiency, right? Because the because when you look at the wide receivers, a target from Deshaun Watson to DeAndre Hopkins is not necessarily the same value as a target from Deshaun Watson to Demarius Thomas. Like these are both players are put into consideration here, how good they are, how well they connect and how they've been doing. And you put all that into a number and you could really quantify, hey, I think that this player that doesn't usually perform but has a good quarterback that's giving him the st- ha- giving him the ball and is playing a bad corner is going to get the volume this week and I could expect a guy like Robbie Anderson if he gets eight targets from a Sam Darnold who's been playing better he's liable to put up 97 yards and a touchdown rather than the same eight targets when when Darnold was playing uh bad early in the season would go for 60 and no touchdowns and it's like a cheat code, honestly. It, this is this is basically a, a cheat code into who has been playing well. That's basically what it means. Who has been getting the most bang for the buck in terms of fantasy? And this, and that, of course, efficient, efficiency, All exactly. About efficiency. So bang for buck. That's like uh, that's like the that's like Secret one formula. way to say efficiency, right? Yeah. Do you know what's efficient? More bang for your this buck. studio that we put together. Um, it's so. our it's our first time here. We're glad to have you here, um, Brodo. F- ff.com is where you could find this. You could also find us at Brodo Fantasy on Twitter, at Brodo Fantasy on Instagram. Michael, where can they find you? Instagram. Mike on, real quick, though. Mike on the score but uh, we didn't mention our rankings. Uh, now that we have a new site, are through fantasypros.com. We are on fantasypros.com, and you get to see our rankings through that. Uh, it's our consensus rankings. You get to compare it to how we feel. There's an ECR, which is expert consensus ranking. So you get to see which guys we like compared to the other experts as well. So when we're super right about someone, there's proof right there. And both Michael and Jason have been um, ranked in the top of the Fantasy Pros charts, even though this is their first season with Fantasy Pros. Um, First handful of games. First, Yeah, first handful of games. Both of them have gotten the second overall of any fantasy expert in quarterback picking for the weeks that they picked the quarterbacks. You're, this is the real deal, here, guys. You're getting the real deal. Um, Michael, if they want to find you on Twitter or anywhere, where can they find you? Mike underscore Patrop. Jason? At Jason Patrop. You could find me at Tim Patrop on all social media outlets, but only if you're feeling frisky, real, real, frisky. real frisky. Remember, brotoff.com is the website, the only place where you can find true throw values and true target values. Please do it for the sake of yourselves. Take this. Win a championship with it, people. Trust us. Hashtag in Brodo, we trust. Right. Remember, BrotoFantasy.com, BrotoFF.com, but only if you like winning. For the Brodo Fantasy Football Podcast, we're out. We'll talk to you next time. Instagram.